Well, happy Sunday and happy mid-October from high, high in the Canadian Rockies. This is what October looks like above 2,000 meters. I may have just come down a little bit. I was up at about 2,200 meters, about 7,100 feet. Now, I haven't been able to drive up here for nearly two years, but I've come to see that lake that is in the distance there. So the viewing platform was being rebuilt and the parking and of course, it's all administered by Parks Canada, the oldest park service in the world. And I love Parks Canada, but it can be a bit time consuming <laughs> and a bit bureaucratic. But this is our famous Pito Lake. So this is about as high as one can get on the Icefield Parkway. It's not the highest you can drive in Canada. There is uh, the Highwood Pass in Kananaskis, but we are up in the high subalpine here and just coming into view is one of the most magnificent lakes one can visit at least for a few months every year here in the Rockies. This is the Icefields Parkway. Do have a look at that view down in the distance. So that is the Mastaya River system. The Icefields Parkway connects the Lake Louise area with Jasper, built in the 1930s. And why it is considered, well, it's considered one of the most beautiful drives in the world for all sorts of reasons. But as opposed to following along a single river system, it goes over five. And so you're coming from the south to the north, come up through the Bow system. And I've just come up over Bow Summit into the Mastaya system here, and then into the North Saskatchewan. That's what this flows down into. And then up through the Columbia Icefields, of course, the second largest non-polar ice fields in the world and they give birth to the Sunwapta River which then flows into the Athabasca and that makes its way past Jasper and all the way eventually into the Mackenzie system and the Arctic Ocean. So it's a remarkable area but uh, there's a viewing platform up above me here and that was all being rebuilt. It was a little bit unstable and so there's people up there but I thought I would just come down into this giant rock slide area these huge moraine formations. So, Ebenezer William Pito, born in Kent in England in the 1860s, made his way over here at a young age, a tender age of around 18. And he tried his hand as a prospector, which is very hard in the Rockies, um, and also a trapper, which, you know, mixed feelings about that today. But he became an outfitter and a mountain guide, and he was clearly an outstanding mountaineer. And he worked with Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson was probably the first non-Indigenous person to see Lake Louise or the Lake of the Little Fishes. And of course, probably the most famous lake we have anywhere in the area. Um, but Pito himself was a very solitary creature. He did marry, uh, but his wife tragically passed away just four years after. Uh, but he kept guiding and he became one of the early park rangers. Now it's interesting, when he moved here, he moved into what was initially, of course, the Northwest Territories and Rocky Mountains National Parks, but he lived in Banff. He did go off to the Boer War. One often forgets that war. That's probably a nice thing to do. And he also fought in World War I, but he came back and eventually retired in the 1930s and lived up into the 1940s in Banff, where eventually he passed away, but he loved his solitude and famously, at this lake, which now bears his name. And it seems appropriate because it's, there's not a known indigenous name for Pito Lake. But when he would be traveling with people in the back country here, Pito would get them all set up and then he would come down and camp alone because he found it too busy and crowded to be with all the people traveling up here. Now there's maybe, oh, maybe a dozen people up on that viewing platform. That would have been too much for old Wild Bill. When you come into Banff, there's an image of him in the entrance to town. There are so many stories about him, it's hard to distinguish between fact and hyperbole. But famously, he did show up in a bar in Banff with a live lynx strapped to his back. <laughs> he wanted to have a drink all by himself. Who knows? Now, just to change subject for a minute though, it's lovely to see all of this broken up rock through here with the snow on it and gradually this is how life comes to play in a post-glacial environment now we're still in an ice age technically of course because there's glaciers up behind me but here is lichen forming gradually giving way 
to soil, crypto organic soil, and that just becomes enough soil for all of these high pine trees to take hold in this subalpine environment. And you can see where the distinct tree line is on the mountains around here. So it's nice to get up to this set of elevation here. It's high and you certainly feel yourself working when you do exercise through here. But more importantly, it's, uh, it's good to dress appropriately and have good cleats on your shoes. And I do not have cleats on today, so I've been tiptoeing rather gingerly through the snow and ice. It's getting above freezing in the day and so it's melting a bit and then refreezing at night. But there will be snow here right through to June. This lake will ice over in November. The viewing platform will close. Now in the old days we could walk down to the glacial till at the bottom and a uh, bridge washed out and Parks has said they're not going to rebuild it. They just want to leave it as protected as possible. Now I just would like to carry on a little bit more. I'm going to hike back up this path and give you one broader view up above from the viewing platform. It'll be a bit noisier up there with other people but give you a classic view towards the Pedro Glacier and the Wapta Ice Field and more of a panoramic over this famous lake. So thank you for joining me and I will be back, well on the video I'll be back momentarily but for me it'll take oh about 12 minutes or so to walk up there. And just like that, I'm back again up on the viewing platform. There's the full length, about 2.8 kilometers of mighty Pito Lake. And this is really what I want to show. There's all the marine, all the debris from the glacier, and there's the Pito Glacier coming off the Wapta Ice Field up in the distance. Uh, and if I look back up to the left here, you look up towards Bow Summit itself. We do a lot of backcountry skiing up there in the winter time, which starts just in a couple of weeks. And down the other side, the water flows down into Bow Lake, which is of course the headwaters of the Bow River. Makes its way through, down through Lake Louise, down through Calgary, meets the Old Man River, and then carries on to meet the Red Deer, North Saskatchewan, and flows all the way into the Hudson's Bay. So this is one of these magic views in the Rockies. Next summer, I'll be able to come and give you a different view up here with the deep, deep turquoise, but because the glacier is not melting, the rock flower, which is the ground up mountains, is no longer flowing in here. But you can track out from here, from this lake, it's draining into the Mistaya River, and down below in the distance is the Waterfowls Lake, or lakes, excuse me, and then all the way down to the Saskatchewan River at the bottom of that valley. That is a gorgeous bike ride too, incidentally, downhill for oh, 30 kilometers or so. Pretty spectacular. And a lovely sky, and it's maybe, maybe even a degree or two above freezing now out here. So it's lovely to be here and to be able to share this with everyone. See this platform just reopened. You can see lots of new construction. And of course, thousands of people do visit here during the high season. During the whole pandemic, we didn't have the normal coach tours, but they're all gonna come back. So I'll just turn around and say, thank you everyone for joining me. Please join me on a live virtual tour. This is one place that I won't be doing a live virtual tour because I simply don't have reception here. And so that's why I make these little YouTube videos. But if you can like and subscribe, I meant to ask for that. I don't even really know why. <laughs> but uh, Pito Lake, and I just wanna show in the distance fabulous wind blowing off the glacier right now. Huge storm out on the west coast coming in by Vancouver. It's called an atmospheric river. That will probably end up, well, it almost for sure ends up being snow for us. And the sun is just shifting across the lake itself. So I'll leave you with a couple of moments here of just beauty and silence. Pito Lake, Banff National Park, Alberta, Canada. And a final hello from the edge of Bow Lake. So now I'm on the Bow side of the pass and there's Nam Tija Lodge in the distance. The Simpson family. And out around the distance, the back of those mountains, the Wapta Ice Field. And now the glacier on this side, the Bow Glacier is not melting anymore. And so therefore this lake is becoming clearer and clearer. And this is the headwaters of the mighty Bow River. So anytime you come on a virtual tour with me and 
Banff or Canmore or Calgary, this is where this water begins. And there is the Crowfoot Glacier up in the distance. Beautiful light off the top of it. And out in the middle of it is a large rock that only became exposed about 12 years ago. Would have been under ice for millennia. And a very light color when you see it without snow on top as it gradually oxidizes. But there we are. So this is the headwaters of the Bow River. And then up over the pass in the distance, it's the headwaters of the Mustaya and Pitu Lake, where we just were. So thank you for joining me on this beautiful October Sunday. And I'm already in short sleeves because it's warmed up to six degrees Celsius. Have a lovely time and I hope you enjoy these videos. See you on a live virtual tour, everyone.